Now, I get a lot of hate mail. I got a lot of criticism from critics and even from friends who say, Ken, you keep bringing up race. And I said, it's at the center. You know, we were started under the idea that all men are created equal. But guess what? The guy who wrote that sentence owned more than 100 human beings. He changed the entire country. A documentary on Jackie Robinson. Why? Like many great people, uh, they become kind of paralyzed by the mythology that, that, that surrounds them. So it was our intention, Sarah Burns and David McMahon are the co-producers and co-directors and myself, to liberate him from the tyranny of that mythology and to tell a more complicated story, a more complex story, something that perhaps some people are, are, are not wanting to hear that has to do about ongoing issues of race in the United States. What is it that you think Americans don't want to hear? Well, I, I think Americans don't want to have a conversation about race. I mean, when the Charleston massacre happened and then almost immediately the Confederate flag was removed from the State House grounds in Columbia, everybody was kind of like, oh, shoo, now we don't have to talk about race anymore. That's done the quid pro quo. And it's not. Those people are still missing. And oh, by the way, sales of Confederate flags went up. A lot of things that Jackie Robinson's story brings up are things that are happening right now. Confederate flag, driving while black, stop and frisk, uh, arson to black churches, even the equivalent of Black Lives Matter. We will inspire the greatest vote in the history of this nation. You would think that with Obama as being the first black yes. president, that things would have gotten better. So what happens what is, is, is what that is we have people who just said, I want him to be uh, you know, a failure, which means you want America to be a failure, that I plan to uh, uh, you know, uh, obstruct everything. You had the birther campaign, which is just a polite way of saying the N-word. Or Scott Walker, who was a presidential candidate for a while, who said, I don't know if he's a Christian. That's another polite way of saying the N-word. So what happens is, is that a majority of us were overwhelmed and excited by the possibility. Others of us, not so much. Donald Trump has said, I am just channeling what people don't want to talk about. No, I'm that, just channeling no, the not. spirit there, of frustrated Americans who don't see a bright future. There, there are a, a number of people who, for whom there is a great deal of economic anxiety going on, despite 73 months of job growth, uh, despite the fact that we have the most stable economy on earth. You've got two choices in politics. You can either make enemies of the other, or you can figure out that we're all in this together. And so at the both extremes of this political conversation, you have two candidates who are excelling at making enemies of other people. You have Donald Trump making enemies of women and immigrants and black people and Muslims. And you have Bernie Sanders who is making enemies of all corporations, entrepreneurs, Wall Street and whatever. And there doesn't this seem is, to be a middle ground. And there's no middle ground. And the point is, there only can be a middle ground. Only solutions that work for the United States are when everybody's in it together. Do these people have real anxieties? Of course they do. But you cannot take poor whites or anxious whites and say your enemy are poor and anxious blacks or Hispanics or fill in the blank. That's the politics of division. And Bernie Sanders does the same thing on the left, in which he says, you can own, I, I've got only one note here. I have only have one note, which is bad Wall Street, bad this, bad that. And you need this, all of us. What are we gonna do, get rid of Wall Street? Get rid of businesses? Get rid of this? No, we actually have to come together.